Good morning, Slate Church. I hope you're doing well wherever you're tuning in. I'm David, and this is Brittany. Hello. Welcome. Brit Brittany, tell the good people what time of year it is. What month is it? It is August. When we're filming this? Yes. And it it's will September be September. When you're watching this. <laughs> that yeah. was a trick question. <laughs> Happy September 5th. Um, wherever you're tuning in, we're just stoked that you're with us. Um, you might be at your cottage. That would be a pretty sweet gig. Um, it's Labor Day weekend, so that's actually pretty likely. Um, you could be in your living room. You could be at a watch party. Wherever you're tuning in, we're just glad that you're with us. And we want you to do one thing. And what that is, is fill out a connect card. Can you tell people how to fill out a connect card? Yeah, so if you go to the Slate Church website and go www.slatechurch.com slash connect, there's a connect card there and we would love to hear from you. Super easy. Um, it's going to ask you a couple questions. And actually right now, a member of our host team is going to put it into the chat. Um, so you can welcome to fill that out. But Brittany said that it's September. We've got some stuff here. Brittany, can you walk us through what activity we're going to be uh, jumping into here? Well, I am so excited for fall. I am so excited for fall kickoff that I thought we should do the most fall activity I could think of, other than going to the pumpkin patch. Amazing. Well, take a step towards so the table and show us what I brought we've got us here. some pumpkin flavored food and beverages. Okay. So, David, beverages. we have. The classic pumpkin spice latte. Oh, my word. It doesn't get more classic than <laughs> that. I haven't had this since that. last October. You, do you drink them? I've dabbled. This is, this is what I, my take on the pumpkin spice latte. Yeah. This is what I get. I get a blonde roast Kay. with some pumpkin cold foam on top. Shout out to Tim Hutchison. And I actually know mm -hmm. that it's not Tim Hutchison's idea. It's his lovely wife, Julia Hutchison's idea. Yes. So shout out to Julia Hutchison yes. for that one. Okay, so this is like the actual classic. This is the real So deal. it's gonna it's gonna oh be sweet. There's even like the whipped cream melted into there because it's been sitting for a is while. That what we're gonna start with? Let's do it. We're just sampling it? Yeah. All right. And then just share just share your thoughts. We're gonna be pumpkin connoisseurs. All right. All right. Make sure we sip it. Yeah, Can't I forgot just... I forgot how sweet these were. Yeah. This is sweet. I've got like a gentle taste of pumpkin. It's not I wouldn't call that gentle. <laughs> An abrasive taste of pumpkin. Yeah. Um, fun fact for you, I worked at Starbucks for a couple years. Oh, if I ever see the pumpkin syrup, I will puke. Like, okay. I had it in my hair. Wow, I note. had it everywhere. <laughs> As we're about to eat, like, six different things all tasting no, like pumpkin syrup. No, it's just the syrup. The syrup is so thick, and it's just got a weird texture. Anyway. This is okay. good. Um, Next up, uh, Starbucks competitor, I don't know if they're competitors, Tim Hortons. Tim Hortons, yeah, they're totally on the same page. <laughs> pumpkin <Yeah>. Timbits. <laughs> pumpkin so, Timbits. Yeah. Come on. Do we do a cheers here? Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> now i got to talk while we eat. <laughs> I like it. That's good. It's not overwhelmingly nope. pumpkin. No, it's, it's like light. cinnamon sugar. It's light. It's moist. Mm -hmm. Um I would recommend. You've I would got give like this a nice kind of like brown sugar icing yeah. around it. We'll just I would give that like Madison. a solid eight out of ten. Um, yeah, for, I would eat that again. Yeah, for yeah. reference, I would put the latte at six out of ten. It's just really sweet. Five and a half. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it, I was frankly disappointed. I yep. might be off of pumpkin spice season before it even started. <laughs> what do we have next? Um, do you, which one? You choose. <laughs> this thing's just huge. Yes. <laughs> All right, what, what, what is this? Also from Starbucks, it's the pumpkin spice scone, the which I feel like is scone. another classic. I meant hear be, about it a lot. So meant let's to be eaten with let's the pumpkin spice latte? Do we just kind of Just go for it, yeah. Right. It's crumbly. It's crumbly, tr right. In true scone wow, fashion. All right, one bite. Everybody knows the rules. <laughs> um, mm. I like the bread. I don't like the icing. It's too much. The icing's a mess. It's mm -hmm. falling off. It, it's very sweet. It tastes like a like a like a Christmas cookie that you're eating on like January seventh. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like the, uh, the icing yeah. just a little bit past its prime. Yeah. I would Not give it really. a four out of ten. For sure, was frozen at some point. Yeah. Okay. I'm frankly disappointed. Let's squeeze in the pumpkin spice Worthers. All right. We gotta do this one fast. We're running out of oh, time. Nice and soft. It is melted, ladies and gentlemen. Um, one bite. Mm. Not a lot, like not too strong pumpkin. 
I like it. If you told me this didn't taste like pumpkin, like, it, you yeah. could have told me this was, like, butterscotch, I would have believed you. Yeah. And I don't know if that's an indictment of, like, my tasting ability <laughs> or if it's an indictment of the Werther's, um, but. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. now you know. We did it so you don't have to. You did. This is your fall pumpkin, all things pumpkin review. Yes. Um, you can click the link in um, Brittany's bio for more. Um, <laughs> check out her store. Subscribe. <laughs> yeah, subscribe, like, comment. Yes. Um, okay, we can't wait to see you at fall kickoff. But until then, let's get into church. Let's get into church. Next week is fall kickoff. So if you're tuning in online, we would love to see you in the room. If not, keep tuning in with us. We're going to have more fun pre-rolls to come. But wherever you are, why don't you stand up, lift your hands, and we'll pass over to Kim to lead us into worship. Awesome. family, we are so happy to have you join us here today. Listen, if this is your first time tuning in with us online or your first time hopping in on a watch party, we just ask that you fill out a connect card so we can make sure to connect with you. But for now, we're going to head into a time of worship. And this is one of my favorite parts, not only because we get to worship God for the things that he's done in the past, the things that he's doing right now, and the things that he's going to be doing in the future, but we also get to praise him first and foremost for who he is. So wherever you find yourself, just ask if you can to stand up to your feet. We're going to shift our focus, lift our hands and our voices, and we're going to sing together. As I reflect, I find perspective. They're in the best and worst days of this life. You are always on my side. You're in the pain, you're in the promise, and all the days the furnace finds my
on, church, wherever you are, whatever whatever your weeks look like, whatever your coming week is looking like, let's just put all that aside and let's just direct all of our attention to Jesus in this moment. talks about seeing dead things come to life when we put our faith in Christ God and he's the only one that can do that so let's just declare this out just full of faith sing I see heaven and I see heaven wide open your presence overflowing I see healing restore Dead things to life, come on. Dead things to life, I, I see heaven.
incredible declaration that we're making here today. God, we are here in this moment, in this space, whether we're at home or at a watch party, wherever we find ourselves today, God, we're here for you and we wanna see you move. We wanna see you bring revival into our cities. We want your presence here with us today, God. What a declaration to make as a church here this morning, this afternoon, this evening, whenever you're tuning into this. And listen, we're gonna continue in a time of worship and, and continue seeking the presence of God and inviting him into the spaces that we find ourselves. But in a moment like this, every single worship set we take, every every service, Service, whatever it looks like, we take some time to read out some of the praise reports of what God has done in our church over this past week. And listen, this isn't over the last like month and a half. This is this past week God has been moving in our church. And, and we do this to remind ourselves of the miracles that God is doing today, the provision that God is giving the people today, the, the healing that he's bringing to people today. There were a lot of praise reports that came in over this past week. So we're gonna, as we're gathered here, joining our hearts in, in song and in worship to God, we're gonna join our hearts in celebration today as we celebrate celebrate some of the things that God has done. And so uh, just, I, I picked three out of the pile here and, uh, and this is what they are. Someone's praising God that they brought, they bought their first house far faster than they expected. Come on, why don't we put our hands together for that? That's a huge burden off of somebody's shoulders to be able to get into the market here. Someone's thankful for a powerful night of worship on Sunday. What an incredible opportunity we had to worship God at our worship services a couple of weeks back. It was phenomenal. And listen, someone is thankful uh, that they were able to spend time with a friend for the first time in years. It's pretty amazing, just those opportunities opportunities. Sometimes it's the small things that God is doing in people's lives that are so significant and impactful to them. And as much as we take time to celebrate what God has been doing, we also take time to pray over the needs in our community. And again, these are needs that have come in over this past week. And so in a moment like this, where our eyes are fixed on God and we're, we're lifting our voice in prayer and in worship, we're going to take a moment to pray over some of the things that have come in this past week. And listen, if you have a prayer request, we would love to pray over that at our prayer mornings on Thursday. We'd love to pray over it in a moment like this. And so you can go to slatechurch.com slash prayer and submit your prayer and praise reports there. But we're gonna read out some of the prayer requests from this past week, okay? So let's lean in here as if they're our own. We're praying for someone who has an upcoming interview. Come on. We're praying for our brothers and sisters in Afghanistan who are being persecuted for their faith. Come on, we're standing alongside that today. We're praying for someone's friend who has so many questions about God and is curious about coming to church. We're praying that they would have the right words to say and just continue to love them in the best way that they can. Come on. We're praying for someone as they begin their last year of school in the fall, and we're praying for financial needs as somebody pays for their tuition again in this coming term. Come on, what an incredible just needs that are in our community, needs that are around the world. We're gonna lift our voice in prayer today. And so I'm gonna, I'm gonna be that representative today, but as you're standing, wherever you are, maybe you're in a service, maybe you're at home, but if we wanna bow our heads and close our eyes, if you wanna stand alongside us as we pray here today, I just wanna invite you to extend your hand towards the screen as an outward symbol of, of the posture of our hearts today. Say, I'm praying in each of these situations. And if you have a need of your own that isn't maybe represented in those four prayer requests that I read off, uh, that's probably going to be a majority of people here. Why don't you raise your other hand to, to represent that need as we pray over each of these today. God, we are um, just here in this moment. God, we're in the studio on a Sunday night, and this is being played on the next Sunday, but it doesn't matter when it, all this is happening because your presence is here with us as we recognize that you're with us, God. And so we're recognizing that your presence is here with us wherever we find ourselves in this moment, Lord, that your presence is here, God. And we thank you that in your presence is a fullness of life, God, that you restore the things in our life that are out of our control, Lord. And so we wanna lift up all of the needs that have come up in this last uh, couple of, of seconds here, God, uh, uh, financial needs needs for people going to school in the fall, maybe stress needs as they're, as they're processing through uh, what, their, what their term is going to look like. God, we pray for the Christian church in Afghanistan, Lord. We pray that you would be alongside them, God, that you would comfort them, that you would bring them strength, that you would bring them courage, Lord, and, um, and God, that you would just stand alongside them as they're going through things that I can't even wrap my mind around, Lord, in the context that I live in Canada. So we just thank you for the opportunity we have to worship you the way that we do here, Lord, and we just pray for them today that you stand alongside them and give them strength and courage and, and just the, 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 the ability to move forward, God. 
God. And we pray for all of the other needs that are represented by the hands raised in this room and by the hands raised in homes all around Ontario and, and the surrounding areas. Lord, we pray for each of the needs that maybe aren't spoken today, but are felt in everybody's life. God, we thank you so much that you are great and mighty to save and to move in each of these situations, Lord. And we just rely on you today. We release control of our of our uh, all the different things that we wanna hold on to, Lord, knowing that, God, at the end of the day, we don't have as much say in our life as we think we do. But God, you have the final word in everything in our life. And we thank you for that today. And we wanna rest in you, God. We wanna trust in you, Lord. Would you turn our eyes to you today? Would you give us the strength that we need to release the situations in our life back to you, knowing that you're moving, that you're faithful, that you're good, God. And we just wanna take time to worship you, to call on your name, to see revival in our cities, to see revival in our churches, and to see revival in us as individuals. We love you, God, and we lift our voice in praise to you today. In your name we pray. Amen. Come on, why don't we continue to lift our voice and worship as we sing. Come on, church, let's declare this. I see heaven. And I see heaven wide open. Your presence overflow. you can go ahead and grab a seat wherever you are. And can we just put our hands together and thank the worship team for that time of worship and just the diligence and effort they put into that leading up to it. Come on, we have already got a great service rolling so far, but um, we're gonna take some time now. I've got some announcements for us today. I've got uh, an encouragement to give us in our generosity. And then I've got to announce our speaker for us today and just kind of introduce the message that she's gonna bring. But, uh, but before we move into any of that stuff, I wanna encourage us today in our generosity. And we do this every single week. And every single week we take time to just kind of go, listen, generosity is a part of who we are as a church. And so much of our society uh, is focused on us as individuals, even generosity in our society is focused on what we can get back. We gave so that we can get a tax return a lot of the time. And I think that that's just like, it's not the kingdom mindset when it comes to generosity and living with open handedness. And so we take time in all of our services to just encourage us of the purpose behind our generosity, what it means to be generous, the fact that it's important to be generous. And so I wanna read out of a passage of scripture um, in Luke, okay? So Luke 12, 33 to 34. And many of us will have heard this passage, um, but it's kind of said in a bit of a different way. You know, the passage, um, I was drilled into 
to my mind growing up, and uh, I'm probably gonna botch it now that I'm trying to like recite it from memory here, but it is, um, you know, don't store up for yourself treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, for, uh, but store up for yourself treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy and thieves don't break in and steal, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And we've heard that verse a lot of times, and the gospels, it's written in one of the gospels, and it's also written here in Luke, but the, the passage in Luke says it in a bit of a more direct and straightforward way. And as I was reading it, I was just kind of struck by it, and I want to read it for us today. It says this, sell your possessions and give to the poor, period. It's the opening line for it. Sell your possessions and give to the poor. Provide purses for yourself that will not wear out, a treasure in heaven that will never fail, where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And so we see just a bit of a twist on that uh, classic passage that we talk about also. But that first line, it just really struck me as I was reading it. Sell your possession and give to the poor. Oftentimes I wonder like, how am I gonna encourage our church in generosity? What's that gonna look like? And, and as I look through scripture, it's so like apparent. It's just direct... Uh, kind of instructions for us as, as a community and as a church. Sell your possessions and give to the poor. Pastor Brandon was talking about this in uh, his message this past week where he looks at the book of Acts and the early church and, and just kind of mentality the early church had towards the possessions that they had where they were selling the things that they had in order to cover the needs of those in their community and those in that, in that early church. And it's just such a powerful demonstration of how we should view the wealth and the things that we have. Jesus is teaching about this. Don't store up for yourself things that are here and in the immediate but store it for yourself treasure in heaven where it actually matters. What's in front of us will be withered away. It'll be eaten by moss. It'll be destroyed. It'll be stolen. It can be taken from us. But what can't be taken from us is just the, the treasure that we can build as we are obedient to what God asks us to do. And what has God asked us to do? He's asked us to live open-handedly with the finances that he's given us. He's asked us to give back to him what he's first given to us. And that's what the opportunity that we have in our encouragement here for our generosity moment, talking about tithe, talking about offering, talking about above and beyond. But all that stuff, I just want to remind us the significance and the importance of living open-handedly with what God has given to us and also tithing and pouring back into your local church, into here at Slate Church to see what God will do with the finances that you'll release back into him as He as we reach this kind of surrounding area and, and work towards this mission as a church to make disciples of all of Ontario. And so we're gonna pray over our giving today. Up on the screen right now, it's coming up, is gonna be a bunch of different ways that you can give. My wife and I, we use automatic monthly giving. Sometimes when we get random uh, money that comes in kind of uh, out of the blue, which doesn't happen all the time, I wish it happened more. But uh, when it does happen, basically we, uh, I think we text to tithe it in. And uh, I actually don't really know what we do. Beth, Beth takes care of all that stuff. I just make sure it gets done. She actually does all the doing. So thank you, Beth, for doing that. But anyways, there's a bunch of different ways that you can give. Uh, we're gonna pray over that right now. So why don't you close your eyes. God, we thank you so much that you actually invite us into generosity, Lord. That the way that you've set up your kingdom, God, in the world that we live in is to be open-handed. God, that we actually are fulfilled on a much deeper level than we can imagine as we are obedient to the call and the, and the act to give back to your local church and to give to those around us, Lord. We thank you uh, just for the blessing that generosity is. I pray that we would uh, just take something new from this today and that your Holy Spirit would speak to us, Lord. And we pray over the finances that are coming in, even this moment as, as automatic is happening, as people are giving right now, as whatever is going on, God. We pray for the finances that are coming in this week. Lord, we pray that you would multiply them and do more through your local church than we could ever do as individuals with these finances. We love you and we thank you and ask all this in your name. And everybody said, amen. Amen. Come on. Listen, I got two announcements for us today. All right. Track with me two announcements. And they both kind of are around the same thing. And there's lots of really useful information in these announcements. Okay. Usually we've, well, actually our announcements are always good, but this day specifically, the announcements are important. So I need you to lock in here. I need you to track with me. Two announcements. The first is that we have our launch Sunday coming on September 12th. How exciting is that? You can put your hands together wherever you are and just celebrate. That's got to be like, what are we recording for the fifth right now? So that's next week is Launch Sunday. That's pretty incredible. So let me give you some information around Launch Sunday and what is happening, okay? So as many of you know, we've been, uh, we're in Maxwell's right now. This is where we've been doing the studio. So Maxwell's in the evening is going to be happening at 7 p.m. here at Maxwell's Concerts and Events. There's gonna be a live service, which is so phenomenal. And we're, we've loved Maxwell's. God has blessed us with this space. It's really close to the universities. It's easy to get to. And so we're really excited to have live services 7 p.m. here at Maxwell's. We also have services happening in Elmira at 10 a.m. at Elmira Lions Hall. And so we're really excited about getting live services up again in Elmira 
So if you're tuning in and you're from that Elmira region or anywhere around there, feel free to go to one of those services, actually that service at 10 a.m. in Elmira, okay? So 7 p.m. Maxwell's, 10 a.m. Elmira. And, and the real exciting thing here that I, I wanna announce, and this is, it's, it's as exciting as the other ones, but it's new information to us here, is that we have our Sunday morning services happening at Landmark Cinemas on the boardwalk at 9 and 10, 15. How exciting is that, that we finally locked in a venue for our morning service, Landmark Cinemas at the boardwalk. We're gonna be meeting there at 9 and at 10, 15 on Sunday mornings. And so if you are in the Waterloo region, we're gonna have uh, live kids programming. It's gonna be phenomenal. We're gonna have live worship, live speaking, all of this stuff. What we've maybe traditionally have known in the past uh, as church to look like, it's gonna be very similar to that again. And so we're very excited for that. We would love to see you there at any one of those locations. Really looking forward to it. Okay, so that is like the first the first thing that I want to announce, okay? It's kind of lots of information in there, packed in there. And then the second thing that I want to announce is that locals are happening at uh, that same kind of time. We are launching, as we're launching in the fall, we're also launching locals as a church. And locals is what kind of was been birthed out of our connect groups. And it is an opportunity for us as a community to really grow in our understanding of who God is and to have opportunities to outwork our faith in our local communities and in the community around us, okay? And so if you want to be a part of a local, which I would highly encourage you to do, and I'd love for you to sign up, slatechurch.com slash locals. Go check it out, sign up, put your name down. If you're in a connect group, you'll be in a local. If you're not in a connect group, this is your time to go ahead and do that. Be a part of a local. And locals, they're gonna study the Bible together once a month. They're going to eat together and share a meal and, and build community and relationship and do events together. They're also going to... Um, be serving their community uh, together as, as, as a local. And so we're really excited to see all those different dynamics at play so we can grow in our relationship with one another. We can grow in our understanding of the word of God and we can grow in our service to the community around us. And so if you are part of Slate Church, you should be part of a local. We would love to see you in that smaller community where you get to know people, build accountability, build relationships and are able to serve the city around you as you grow in your understanding of who God is and how he affects your life here in Kitchener-Waterloo or whatever city you live in in 2021, okay? So we're really excited about locals. Those are the two announcements. We got uh, launched September 12th in three different locations live and we also have locals launching at that same time. So we'd love for you to be a part of both of those things. But now I have an opportunity to welcome up our speaker for today. And so I wanna encourage you, listen, maybe you're sitting back. I want you to lean in. I want you to get your notebook open. I want you to get your phone out if that's where you take notes and just lock into the message here today. Because again, even as we're like, we've, we hear messages every single week as a church, but God has something new for you today. He's got something fresh that he wants to do and, and don't miss that opportunity. So, so lean in, whether you're in like a classroom or something like that. Whenever I was in university, I was just taking notes on everything that they were saying. And I can guarantee you it was not as important as what's going to be shared here today. And so I want you to encourage you to lean in, take notes as Pastor Emma comes to speak for week three of our countdown series. Hey church, how great was worship today? You know, I'm so excited for next week, September 12th, where we have our relaunch Sunday. We are going to be worshiping live, in person, all across this city. It's going to be fantastic. I'm excited for that to get back together. You know, I feel like it's been a bit of a wild season. I, like I would say that for the past little while. And I'm just excited to see you again in the flesh, in person. If you haven't been out to watch parties before, haven't seen you in a while, I'm excited to see you. If you've joined us during this online season, man, I'm so glad that I'm going to actually get to meet you in person. Please come and say hello. I would love to see you. You know, we're excited for September 12th, but of course we are so excited for what comes after September 12th and the weeks that follow as we look to make disciples of all of Ontario and we look to, to grow deeper in community and to, to grow as a church. We're just in full anticipation mode with what God's going to do. But I'm also looking forward to preaching today and talking about um, what God has placed on my heart. You know, we're in the countdown to September 12th, to our relaunch, and we just want to orient ourselves really in these weeks leading up just towards what God is doing, what God has to say, and be in the posture of readiness. So why don't we jump right into scripture here. I'm going to go to John 15, verses 1 to 8, and I'm actually going to read out of the message version so you can follow along with me. It says this, it says, I am the real vine. This is Jesus speaking to his disciples. And my father is the farmer. He cuts off every branch of me that doesn't bear grapes. And every branch that is grape bearing, he prunes back so it will bear even more. You are already pruned back by the message I have spoken. Live in me. Make your home in me just as I do in you. In the same way that a branch can't bear grapes by itself, 
but only by being joined to the vine. You can't bear fruit unless you are joined with me. I am the vine, you are the branches. When you're joined with me and I with you, the relation intimate and organic, the harvest is sure to be abundant. Separated, you can't produce a thing. Anyone who separates from me is dead wood, gathered up and thrown on the bonfire. But if you make yourselves at home with me and my words at home in you, you can be sure that whatever you ask will be listened to and acted upon. This is how my father shows who he is. When you produce grapes, when you mature, as my disciples. Why don't we pray and we will dive into this. God, I thank you so much that you have given us your word, Lord, and there's so much there. And I pray today that you would speak through me as we pull this apart and as we dive into it a little bit more today. In your name we pray, amen. Amen. Well, I don't know about you, but now that it's September, I'm all about fall. We had like a boiling hot August, okay? So hot. I don't know. Every day it was like getting into our cars and like suffocating. And it was such a hot, hot August. And I am ready for fall. I love fall. And I love fall in Waterloo Region. I just feel like there is something about like the harvest that takes place. Like there are so many farmer's fields around and so many things around. I just love the harvest that happens in Waterloo. You know, kids starting school, uh, you know, apple all these great things that happen in the fall. I am easy to please, okay? Send my kids to school and give me a Granny Smith and I'm going to be happy. (laughs) You know, Brandon and I moved to a house um, just about 10 minutes outside the city back in November of 2020. And we are now experiencing fall on our drives out there because we passed by so many farmer's fields. We passed by all of this on this 10-minute drive, and it is so peaceful. It is so wonderful. I have not gotten used to that drive yet. I, I still am in awe of it because as the seasons change, we have seen the growth that has taken place in all of those fields over the course of the whole summer, and we're about to see the harvest come in that takes place now in the fall and in the autumn. I mean, I took the kids to the park the other day, and the, there's a big cornfield that bumps up against the park. I mean, we are in, like, Mennonite country uh, out where we live. And the kids and I were, I won't tell the farmer this, but we were, like, climbing towards the cornfield and, like, looking at the corn stalks. I think it's corn for cows, so it's not, like, it's that big of a deal. We only looked at one stalk. But we were, like, pulling it apart, and I was showing them. And we are like, oh, the harvest, it's going to be, it's going to be so great. You know, I, I was realizing that in our lives, just as the, the fields are changing and they are coming towards harvest time, in our lives, things rarely stay the same. And we are actually made to produce a harvest. We are actually made for production. We are made to actually see things come out of us, to bear fruit. Not necessarily corn, but to bear fruit is the example that we see given in Scripture. You see, when we become a Christian, when you accept Jesus into your life and the free gift of salvation that he came and died and rose again, when you accept that in your life, you actually also receive the Holy Spirit. And out of the Holy Spirit comes a harvest, comes fruit. There's fruit of the Spirit that we can look to. You know, we can rhyme these off, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. And there's these fruits that come out of us as we learn to live in the Spirit, as we actually look to the Spirit. And it's easy to talk about these. And these are things maybe you have memorized or something that you've written down somewhere or something that you've read over in Scripture. But sometimes it can feel like this fruit is a little bit lacking in our lives. I don't know about you, but for me, sometimes I'm like, okay, I could, I could do with a bit more um, peace in my life. You know, all of a sudden I read a news headline and it can throw me off for a while. And I just feel anxious or I feel worried. And I'm like, where is this peace? You know, sometimes I'm lacking self-control. All of a sudden I'm eating all this junk food or I'm staying up late and I'm just not treating my body well in that area. Or, you know, patience can be a difficult fruit sometimes that is lacking in my life as I'm trying to get, you know, three kids at the door, kids eating breakfast or going to bed, um, you know, or, or listening or uh, coming back in the house after playtime or patience can be a little bit lacking in certain areas. And all the moms and dads said, uh, amen. You know, I was thinking about this idea that, that sometimes the fruit in my life, this kind of outward um, forbearance of what God is doing in my life, of what the Holy Spirit's doing in my life, sometimes can feel like it's lacking a little bit in certain areas. And I, I realized 
that sometimes I think I'm getting the, getting the source and the produce mixed up. Like sometimes I'm actually going to the wrong source in order to have an output in my life. You know, Jesus says, I am the vine and you are the branches. And we can kind of grasp this, right? We can kind of get the idea that we are the branches. Okay, God, like I'm the branch, you're the vine, this is great. We are vehicles used to produce fruit. We move forward your kingdom. We actually are, are part of that line. But oftentimes, in order to try to get the fruit of faithfulness and godliness in our lives, we are attaching ourselves to things other than Jesus. We're actually disconnecting ourselves from him in order to produce this. And sometimes we're doing this even subconsciously. You know, some of us are expecting to set up home and get everything good and get everything in order and then invite Jesus into that space, right? We figure out things in our lives. We want to make sure things are perfect. We want to make sure that, okay, if I can get this figured out and I can get this sorted out and I can have this worked out, well, then Jesus is going to, I'm going to be able to meet Jesus in that place. I'm going to be ready for him. I'm going to be ready for what he has. And we're expecting Jesus to meet us there. But Jesus is actually saying, make your home in me. Don't try to do it on your own. Don't try to do it in your own strength. Don't try to do it with your own smarts. Don't try to do it with the right job or the right relationship or bank account or perspective or friendships. Do it in me. All of the good, all of the bad, all of the rooms that you would close when people come over because it's messy behind the door, all of that, do it in me. Abide in me. See, God calls us to be fruit bearers and to live according to his will. But he is, here here is the key of all of it, is that he never expects us to figure it all out on our own. Sometimes we expect so much of ourselves and God is not expecting that of us. He doesn't send us off solo. John 14, 26 says, but the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name will teach you all the things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. You see, as the branches, we actually have the power of the Holy Spirit within us to remain attached to the Father and to produce the fruit. And yet so many of us are just trying to figure this out on our own. We're treating this as a solo mission and it is leaving us grasping at the wrong things for sustenance and life. So we know that Jesus is the vine, and yet we sometimes attach ourselves to things that are not him. And I just want to talk about a couple of them. And these two, I think, are the big ones. And I think they're actually kind of sneaky because we don't even realize we're doing it because we use language in church that would make us feel like maybe we're just doing the right things here. But if we're not careful, these two things can actually be the wrong source in our lives. So just check this out. Track with me here. The first one that we can sometimes attach ourselves to as our source in order to try to bear fruit on the other side of it is other people. So this is a place where we can actually get really mixed up and really disappointed when we start to attach ourselves to other people as our source for life, as our source for what we need. So many of us are actually looking to other people to be our life source. And we use language like, oh, I'm loving other people. Other people are loving me. Whatever. But we're actually starting to cre- create this dependence on other people as our life source above Jesus. See, the problem is, is that when we look to other branches to fuel us and sustain us, we, we have to actually realize that we are just actually looking towards a pile of branches, basically firewood, to be our source. It would be like looking at a pile of logs and saying that they are alive and well when they are no longer attached to the tree and they are actually cut down and just in a pile. Our validation, our worth, our sense of self, our mission, our direction, our purpose, our confidence, our energy cannot come from other people. That cannot be the main source that we look to because people will disappoint you and they will hurt you. Like that's just the reality and you're going to disappoint other people and you're going to hurt them. And that's sometimes hard to reconcile and to really realize. I think this has really come to light in COVID, at least for me a little bit more. I know that I have hurt people in the past couple of years. You know, I know that there are expectations that maybe I wasn't privy to, that people have been hurt by. I know that there are people who uh, maybe there's expectations that I was aware of and I, I failed you or I have somehow disappointed you. I have hurt people. And that's hard to recognize and to be able to say. I've also been hurt by other people. I've been hurt over, over the past year and a half 
from people just, you know, feeling like they're feeling disconnected or feeling, I I feel like they've said they're going to do one thing and then doing another thing or, you know, people coming up and criticizing or giving feedback that's, that's really rough to hear or maybe even worse, silence, you know, people who are just not saying anything to your face and then gossiping behind your back or people taking off without any chance to have a conversation or communicate. People hurt people. It happens. And it's not necessarily out of ill intent, but it happens at times. And if our life source is coming from others, and we expect that to sustain us to bear fruit, to serve, to love our community, to be disciples of Jesus, we are actually going to be experience burnout really quickly. Because as much as people are wonderful, they are far from perfect. And if our lives are built on people, when the storms come up, it's not going to actually be sustainable. You know, I think we've seen this. When the person doesn't call, when the team member doesn't follow up, when someone has a moral failing, when those things happen, we end up hurt and discouraged. And if they have been our life source, if they are the ones that we are searching and looking to in difficult times, in trouble time, in in any kind of life coming out of us, in in keeping our faith, if we are attached to people for that, man, what are we going to do when all of a sudden that, that source kind of fails us or goes out? What are we going to do with that? We need to be careful and recognize that other people are also branches. You know, I, I've had to recognize this, that, that your spouse is a branch. Your spouse is not the vine. Brandon is amazing. He is a wonderful husband. He is present and attentive and loving and caring and will sit with me when I'm being dramatic and will be with me uh, uh, in all of these different circumstances and times. But there are situations and times where I have looked to him to be my source over Jesus, and that's not okay. That's the wrong order. He is not my source. My parents are not My source, they're amazing people. I love them. I've had so many women come up to me and say, it's been amazing to be able to meet with your mom and sit with your mom, and she's so great, and she is, and my dad is fantastic, but they are not my source. Your kids are not your source. They can't be, whether they're toddlers and they are giving you purpose and they are giving you life, or maybe they've grown up and they become good friends of yours and and they just are a confidant, they cannot be your source of life. It doesn't work with other people. Brandon and I, as your pastors, we're not your source. We are branches. Your locals leader is a branch. Your team lead is a branch. We are branches, and we can encourage each other. We can cheer one another on. We can uh, experience growth together. We can dive deeper together. We can go through life experiences together. We can come alongside one another in difficult times and good times. But we are branches, and other people are branches. We have to get this right. They cannot be our source. And the second one is this. Sometimes we look to ourselves to be our source. We look to ourselves to be the vine that we are getting sustenance from. Sometimes we expect so much of ourselves. And this really comes out of this comparison mentality. It looks like everybody else is kind of self-made, right? They're a self-made man, a self-made woman. They've got it together. Somehow they've got this figured out and that figured out and they don't struggle with this or it doesn't seem like that. And so that's what I've got to be. You know, I, I always notice for people that when I hear the word should, I'm pretty, I'm almost always sure that, that, that someone's struggling with shame in that moment. You know, I should have this figured out by now. I should be able to do this job. I should be happy because look at everything that's going on in my life. I shouldn't be this way. I shouldn't have this. I shouldn't. Ex- I, I. We go into this place where we are so hard on ourselves and have so many expectations because we believe that something we are doing should be the source of what is coming out of us. We have this expectation somewhere along the lines that we are the vine, we are the branches, and we are the fruit. We've got to have it all figured out. We've got to have that whole lifeline worked out within ourselves or there's something wrong with us or there's something missing. If I could just muster up more self-discipline, maybe I'd get in shape. If I just had more systems and structures in my life, then I would have it all figured out. If I could just find a way to be more like that person over there, then everything would be good. We start comparing ourselves to other people and have expectations on ourselves that actually are not of God. Because this kind of behavior, this kind of thinking, it only leads to activity, not fruit. It leads to busyness, not harvest. It leads to stress, not rest. 
Our source has to be Jesus. And this actually takes a really big level of humility. You know, because it puts us in a place of recognizing that we are the branch. We're actually not the vine. And we're not the fruit. We are the branch. You know, this is also actually one of the most freeing things, if we can get a grip on it, that our job is to be the branch. We don't have to, we don't have to do it all. But get this. You see, with Jesus, when we connect ourselves, when we make that conscious choice to connect ourselves that he is the vine, that he is the life source, we actually get to experience a two-way relationship with him. This doesn't just go one way. When we choose Jesus, he also chooses us. In verse 4, it says, live in me, make your home in me, just as I do in you. You see, by turning to Jesus, by not putting ourselves or other people in that place, we are brought into this loving home where we are connected to a never-ending source of love, grace, hope, purpose, right living, sanctification, growth, all things that people can't provide us with in a sustainable way, that we can't provide ourselves with just mustering it up. It has to come through the source himself that is Jesus. It's through that that we get to be part of bearing fruit and living lives that impact the world around us. I mean, this is such an incredible picture when you actually stop to think about it. The life-giving vine, it spreads across this province, across this country, across the globe of this vine of Jesus, this spreading vine with branches out all over the place, bearing fruit, loving people, caring for people, coming alongside people, sharing the gospel. What a beautiful picture this is. But you know, there's something that we actually can't forget about here as we're talking about this. Last week, Brandon talked about getting honest with ourselves, right? Getting honest with where we're at with loving people, where we're at with community, where we're at with sin and struggles in our lives, and just pulling it out of the darkness, pulling it out, removing shame from it, pulling it out, and actually getting honest with it, and recognizing that that's where God can do something with it, is in our honesty. And I wonder if you've done this this past week. And I would encourage you to take some time to think about it, because we need to get honest in order to have the humility and openness we need to allow for the next part. In verse 1, Jesus says, My father is the farmer. He cuts off every branch of me that doesn't bear grapes. And every branch that is grape-bearing, he prunes back so it will bear even more. You see, if we're connected to Jesus, if our focus is on him, if we choose to believe that he died for us and rose again, that he is the way, the truth, and the life, then we are going to bear fruit. You can expect that in your life, that if you are connected to the right source, you are going to see fruit come out of your life. The challenge here is that in our humanity and in our brokenness, we are going to experience and also at times choose sin. And this is where the pruning process takes place. See, there are things in our lives that often need to be pruned back. You know, last week I came outside and Kenzie was standing on a chair. These kids have free run of the house, okay? She was standing on a chair beside a bush outside with a pair of scissors. And I mean, we talk about scissor safety, but they also like to cut things. So she's trimming one of our, our, our bushes out there. She was just like cutting it away and like, you know, creating some sort of animal structure or, or sculpture out of it. No, it was just like literally flying little pieces of, uh, pieces of a bush out there. And I mean, we take tri- tree trimming pretty seriously in our house. If you've watched any of Brandon's vlogs, you would see that there's a whole art form to trimming the trees that are happening there. Uh, you know, she's always wanting to help Brandon trim. But I, I think it's good for us to recognize that God doesn't just prune us back. He doesn't just trim us back to be cruel or to cut us. He prunes us so that we actually can be healthy. You know, there are likely things in your life that you can think of right now where you're like, yep, get that out of here, God. Don't miss this spot. Like, this is not a good place. Like, can you just take care of that? And that's fantastic. But it's also important to find ourselves in a posture where we're asking God to actually search us, to actually look and say, is there anything you've got to prune away? And it might be things that I don't even notice or recognize. Psalm 139, 23, search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is anything, any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Now we need to recognize that we are not the vine. We're, not, we're also not the farmer. And we don't know it all. 
We don't always know why a certain area needs cleansing and needs pruning, but God knows that with that gone, we are going to be more effective at bearing fruit. We don't always have to understand every reason why the farmer prunes because he is actually all knowing. We are a branch. Let's stop telling the farmer what to do. We are a branch, Ephesians 2.10, for we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus. He is looking to shape us and form us in a way that is the most productive. You know, recognizing that we are branches actually takes humility and surrender, but it also releases a lot of pressure. It's going to be uh, really important that as we head into the fall that we take this seriously. This is an important piece as we go even into next week. Because if we expect other people to be our main source, if we expect ourselves to be our source, if we hide away for pruning or get mad at God for removing something in us, we are going to become disconnected. You know, it doesn't always happen fast, but I've definitely seen it happen. We're over time, you know, there's a little bit less fruit and you start to realize that this person's kind of feeling disconnected from the source and all of a sudden they're kind of broken off of what God wanted to do in their life. There's a choice that's made here. We need to stay connected to the source. He's going to sustain us in whatever comes this fall and whatever happens with the election and whatever goes on with COVID in our province and whatever happens with kids going to school and hopefully staying in school for the year and whatever goes on in your life, God is going to sustain you if we are focused on being connected to the source that is Jesus. But more than that, he's going to help you lift your eyes off of ourselves and recognize that the branches are not the end of the tree. It's not the end of the vine. It's the fruit of our lives that help to identify the tree, that identify the vine that people actually take notice of. You know, I'm going to close with this, with this story. You know, I took the kids to the park the other day. We love the park. It's near our house. It was great. And there was this huge tree off to the side. And Kenzie ran over to it right away. And she's like, Mom, what is this? Like, what kind of tree is this? There was obviously some fruit hanging on it. And I thought at first maybe it was like a, an apple tree, but didn't have that kind of look to it. And so I came over and I took a look and I was like, this is a pear tree. Like, what the heck is a pear tree doing in the middle of the park? I don't think I've ever seen a pear tree before. There's like hundreds, if not thousands of pears on this tree everywhere. And Kenzie started grabbing the branches down and pulling them down. She started picking off the pears, which I'm sure is fine because it was a public park. She wanted to take them home and cut them open and check it out. So she starts picking off some of these pears. And she thought it was so cool that we had a pear tree in our park, in our neighborhood, like right there, that we have this pear tree right there. And I thought it was pretty cool too. You know, I was thinking about this as we go next week into Landmark Cinemas at the Boardwalk, which is going to be amazing. And we're here at Maxwell's in the evenings, and we're occupying Lions Hall in Elmira. And all of a sudden, we're gathering together again live and worshiping together again. And even as we go as individuals, and maybe we're re-entering workplaces, you know, throughout the fall. And as our kids start school, as we go into university classrooms and start off different things this fall. I I think that it's important to say that my vision and our vision for us as a church is that we would be people who see our lives or that there would be people The people that we meet in these spaces, that the people who are in these neighborhoods, that the people who are in these classrooms, that they would actually see our lives how we live, how we talk, how we love, and go, what in the world kind of tree is that? What kind of tree is that? And that they would actually want to take the fruit and that they would be so blessed by receiving the fruit that is coming out of our lives and, and, and that the, they would be so excited that that kind of tree is in their neighborhood, is in their space, is in their workplace, is in their classroom because it's such a cool tree. It's such a great tree to have. The fruit is just so good coming off of it. And that that actually would cause them to go, okay, what is the source of this? Like what kind of tree is it? And that the fruit that's coming out of our lives because because we are connected to the source, that they would actually be taking that and going, I want to get to the source myself. I just want to understand where this comes from. I actually, and that through that, we are leading people to Jesus. See, we've got to get the source right if we are actually going to be the branches that bear the fruit in our lives that people are actually so curious about. What is that?
What is it about your life and the fruit that's coming out of you? I want some of that for myself, but we've got to get connected to the right source. We've got to be willing to be pruned. You know, I'm going to pray quickly. And if you're listening and, hey, you've never made a decision to follow Jesus, I just really want to pray for you. Now's a great opportunity to do that. If you've just been holding back or you've been unsure, maybe you're listening for the first time and you just want that source, that connection to recognize that God's not mad at you, that he actually wants, he chooses you just as you choose him. He wants to be in relationship with you. And he went so far as to die and rise again so that that sin wouldn't be an issue and that you could have eternal life with him. If that's you today, I just very simply want to pray with you. So if you're at a watch party, why don't you raise a hand up? If you're watching online, you can click a button in the chat. And why don't we pray? God, I thank you for everyone making this decision today. I just pray right now that you would uh, meet them right where they're at, God. That they would know that they are now connected to a life source that is so significant. God, we, we celebrate this decision. We thank you that you would die and rise again so that we could actually make this decision. And God, I pray for everyone that's making it right now that we would just be able to connect and get them in community, God. In your name, amen. Amen. Well, hey, maybe you're listening and you're going, I just need to, to rework where my life source is at. Maybe you've been putting it in other people. Maybe you've been putting it in yourself. Maybe you've been resisting this pruning process that God is doing and thinking that somehow God's upset with you or mad at you or, or trying to cut you down or something like that. And he's really just pruning you for for more fruit. I just want to pray for you, and I also just want to pray for our city as we go into next week as well. So why don't we pray, and then we'll head back into worship. God, we thank you that you've made it clear that we don't have to do this on our own, that we don't have to figure out what we need to prune on our own, that we don't have to try to muster up enough life, that we don't have to look to other people for our life source, God, but that we can actually be connected to you, that we can actually be found in you, that we can be at home in you, and that you give us everything we need, God. Jesus, that you would be so gracious to us. So right now, I pray for every person who has put their hope and their source, whether consciously or subconsciously, in the people around them or in themselves, God, I pray right now that we would release that and we would get back to you, God that we would release everyone else and everything else that we turn to first and we look to right off the bat and we would go to you first, the source of our needs, God. And I pray right now, God, that I give full permission if we are surrendering and for those who are desiring and wanting this, God, that you would prune. God, we just pray that you would prune us so that we may bear more fruit. And that's not always easy, but God, we openly look for it today and we seek it out. God, we pray for next week as we go into these spaces and we occupy and we, we do things live again and we just cry out, God, that you would move and continue to move and that, that we would just be a vehicle that you would use, Lord, as your branches to be able to see people who are far from you come into relationship with you, Lord. We pray for this. We seek it out. And we thank you, God, for this opportunity. In your name, amen. Amen. Hey church, I just have a verse I'd love to read for you and it's from Romans 8 verse 39. And it says, neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And one thing I never wanna become is numb to the power of the gospel. So that's what I love about this next song that we're about to sing. I just encourage you to lean in and really reflect on the lyrics that you're either singing or hearing. In the darkness we were waiting without hope without light till from heaven you came running there was mercy in your eyes to reveal the kingdom coming to a virgin came the word from a throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dirt Praise the 
on, sing this out. What an incredible service we've had here today. Can we put our hands together and thank Pastor Emma one more time for the message that she brought today? Come on, phenomenal. Listen, if you are one of those people that has made the decision to follow Jesus, maybe today was the first time that you've made that decision in your life. What an incredible decision. It's the best decision that you can make. And we wanna provide you as a church some resources to take your next step in understanding who God is and what it means to follow Jesus and what that looks like. And so if you're at a watch party, there's gonna be people across the front of the service that would love to connect with you. I'll probably be there myself. I'd love to get to know you, love to build a relationship with you, love to give you the resources you need to take that next step. Because it's a decision that's made individually, but it's meant to be lived out in, in community and with people around you and in a local church. And so we would love for you to be a part of what is happening here at Slate Church, and we'd love to get to know you. And if you're tuning in online, uh, you can fill out a connect card. There's probably a button coming up in the chat. We'd love for you to click on that, fill a connect card. It would just be an opportunity for us to get to know you more and get you the resources that you need. And hey, listen, if you're in person, as well. We'd love for you to fill out a connect card too to get to know you and uh, and just make sure you get connected into what God is doing here in his church. And uh, and listen, that's really the only thing that I have to announce today. I think we're this is our last watch party before uh, we're kind of doing live services. So 
please register for those. We'd love to see you there. Love to see you in person. It's gonna be phenomenal. Landmark Cinemas, Maxwell's Concert Events, Elmira Lions Hall. All the information is gonna be on our social media. It's gonna be on our website. It'll be hard to miss it. And so we would love to see you at one of those services in person. And uh, hey, if not, we will also see you online. We got some phenomenal stuff happening uh, for our online services as well uh, for everybody across the region that isn't here in Waterloo. And so anyways, uh, it's been phenomenal, church. We love you very much. Thank you for tuning in today. And we will see you live and in person next week.